Daphne from Scrap and Create. And I just noticed my light doesn't look right, so I'm gonna adjust that real quick. We're going to be working on Graphic 45's new folio album, and I'm going to be using, um, what am I using? Blue Fern Passages um, to cover the album. So I've got a couple things already ready. I'm gonna adjust my lamp real quick because I don't think I have enough light. There we go. Over my space, that's a little bit better. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the cover on and then I'm gonna go over some of the embellishments. So I'm using uh, the eight by eight pack and a pack of the dies. And this is the um, first one I'm going to use for the cover, and then I'm going to add some embellishments on some of the simple part of the print. And the album opens this way, so this is the cover. You can actually turn it any way you want, but I believe this is the way it's actually designed. And I haven't done anything with Blue Fern yet, and this paper is just so yummy. It is... <laughs> so smooth and the colors are beautiful and it's just very it's wonderful very heavy it's a card maker's delight because it's a nice heavy um piece of paper um, so it's very high quality you could do um you could easily do mixed media on it because it's so uh, dense so i love it love it love it so there's my cover i'm gonna flip it over and this is what I chose for the back, which is nice and colorful. <clears throat> In the Blue Fern pack, and again, this is Passages, you get 20 double-sided uh, prints. So you get two of each design. So you get 20, 20 sheets, which is nice. That's a fair amount of paper. I'll let you know as I get through um, adding my paper if one pack is going to be enough. And I'll show you as soon as I get this down why it might not be and how you can make it stretch if you want to. So as most of you know uh, that have been on the channel before, I like a very tight border. So you don't see a whole lot of the um, cardstock around the print. It's just my preference. And because of that, they, they use these excellent magnets in here, by the way. Um, there's two waterfalls in here. These waterfalls are four and a half by six and a half, which is really nice because you're gonna have a nice border around any four by six photo you put in here. But that means you can't split this in half and cover two of the waterfalls. So because it's four and a half and I, I like a small border, I'm not gonna be able to get two uh, flaps out of one sheet of paper. So I may need more than the 20, especially if I, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12, 24, yep, I'll need more. So just to cover both of these, I'll need um, 24 sheets. There's only 20 in a pack. So, um, and then I still haven't covered this, put anything in my pocket, covered this or any of these spine pieces. So you are gonna need two packs if you don't decide to cut this down to four inches. And if you cut it down to four inches, you are going to have a very large border around, um, around your designer paper with cardstock. And it also means that if you put an untrimmed four by six on top, you won't have a border around it. You'll just be covering up your designer paper, okay? So, that is the start. Now here's the die pieces. I'm gonna show you something. It comes in this package and you can see the white border around these. Um, some of them come that way and I didn't care for it, like the car here, too much white border. This one did too, so I trimmed it all off, inked my edges and I did the same on the balloon. And then these pieces didn't come with that white trend so, so I didn't have to trim it off. But I'm going to use um, these pieces uh, to decorate the front of my album. So I'm gonna fuss around with this a little bit and then I will tune you guys back in once I, once I figure out my placement and we can put these down, adhere these with some glue. I'm probably gonna add some chipboard to some of them, some of them as well. So I'm trying to get the cap on my glue, there we go. All right, so I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, one more thing. Um, 
These are the Graphic 45 um, tags and it matches the folio perfectly. So I'm gonna be using these tags inside the interior diagonal pocket and I think also the um, top down pocket which is the second page in the folio. So just FYI, I, I was really thrilled to find out that it matched perfectly. Um, so it's a nice accent to the folio itself. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are back to continue working on um, Passages, which is a blue fern collection and we are using the Graphic 45 folio. So I've chosen my papers for the inside and I created uh, this cover by slipping the entire sheet inside the pocket, just drawing a line and then just hand cutting uh, the diagonal for this um, diagonal pocket. So that's pretty straightforward and easy to do. There we go, and then the piece that was left over is gonna fit nicely into the pocket. I'm just slipping it in to make sure it's clear of our score line or our hinge area here. Press that into place. Isn't that pretty? I love this paper. Um, not just the design of the paper, but the quality of the paper is wonderful. Now, there is a notch in this page, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. So what I noticed when I went to slip this inside to, to create a template for the notch is that it's actually glued on this side. So this won't, what fits on the outside won't fit on the inside. So I think I'm gonna actually glue it down as is and then come back and punch a notch out um, with, a, with a punch. I haven't decided. Either that or I'll just leave it a rectangle. Normally I would slip it inside the pocket, trace it, and then either hand cut it or use a punch but since it won't fit in the pocket, that's not an option. And did I tell you I love this paper? Holy cow, it is so nice. Oops, I put glue all the way over that, which I don't wanna do because I don't wanna glue my pocket shit. Okay, I'll let that dry. Let's go ahead and get this back piece on. This is what I chose for the back piece. Isn't it pretty? I think it's really pretty. I think this makes a nice little travel folio. Not too big, so it could be a specific trip. There we go, nice, nice. So then we've got this solid piece to cover and then everything else is a waterfall. There we go. That feels like it's dry enough. And I've already inked on my edges, so you're not watching me do that. I'll try to remember not to glue my pocket shut. <laughs> So I just kind of drew a, a big loop around it so I know I don't glue it shut. So when I was looking at this book and getting ready to cover it, one of the things I found out is the Graphic 45 regular size um, craft tags match perfectly. So I'm going to use some tags in this album on the inside. Okay, so we've got the, the inside diagonal pocket. We've got this tall pocket, and I, I, I'm not sure, but I may punch that out. I've got a um, one and a half inch or one and a quarter inch punch 
that may work perfectly here. I'm going to test that in a little bit. It's time to start selecting papers and trimming out for the waterfalls. So I'm going to take a break here, see if I can't locate my punch, and then um, start picking my papers for the waterfall. This feels really good in your hands. It's very heavy cardstock, um, and I like it. So it closes just like so. Um, there's magnets, and they, they're part of the album, so they, it comes with the magnets already installed that adhere um, these two outside um, panels together. And I think there's two magnets. It's very strong, whatever it is. Um, they're tucked inside, so I can't see them without deconstructing the album, but it feels uh, nice and sturdy. So I, and you can see on the back of these, um, these arms that hold the waterfall in place, it's a very thick magnet. So it seems to be holding everything very nice and neat. Okay, I'm gonna go pick out my papers and then we'll finish this album. Okay, so while I was away, I went through the the die pack, I think that's what it's called, um, and chose, yeah, they call them ephemera die cut shapes, and chose some shapes that I wanna feature on the cover. And I wanna share with you that I'd done some things to alter the image slightly. Um, and I'll demonstrate that with a different piece. So this is how they come in the die pack, and that's too much white for me, so I actually went and fussy cut very tightly around the images of the balloon. This camera's one piece. And then the tickets, I didn't have to do any anything with. I just had to add some ink on the edges. And um, that worked out fine. So this is basically the going to be the bulk of the design. Now I'm going to use some chipboard to create some dimension here. But um, basically, we've got the balloon, the camera. And I wish there was two, because I would pop the flowers if there were or add some flowers on the other side. These tickets, and I think I'm gonna add this too. I haven't decided, but this is the main, uh, these are the two main features of the page. So with that, I'm gonna take a few minutes. I'm gonna cut out some uh, chipboard pieces and get them on the back of these and then start arranging them. And, and then when I get it where I like it, I'll come back and we'll put these down together. Okay, I think this is about what I want. So I added another ticket. I was going to use this, but I think it just blends in too much with the background, so I added a little, uh, another tag with some color, and then I also added this, and then this is another option uh, to go here, and even though I like the word better, it disappears, so I'm going to use this. So I'm going to add some ink to it so it stands out a little bit better, and then we're going to start gluing everything down. So what I did, um, as far as creating some dimension here, I put two layers of chipboard on uh, the lower half of the camera, and then I put a single layer here so that I could tuck the balloon just behind it, and there's a single layer of chipboard here. So you can see that I, I cut a diagonal here on the second layer so that I could slightly nest the balloon, so like so. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do, I think, is go ahead and position the balloon with the camera, and then we'll figure out the rest. I'm trying to decide how high up I want it. Actually, I'm just gonna do it like this. Okay. I think I like that. I let my glue dry, sorry. position this. Now I'm going to be tucking some 
tickets beneath it. And that's one of the reasons why I don't put chipboard all the way to the edge because it makes it easy to tuck stuff under uh, when you're embellishing. Plus it's just really hard to cut chipboard at you know certain angles. So I'm just trying to place it so that we can still see our bird here, which I think is pretty. And press this all into place, okay. Now I'm just adding a little texture to these tickets so they're not just flat. Um, I wanna make them look a little bit more worn and used. So I just bend them about like so. And then I start stashing them around until I find a layout that's pleasing. And I may have to trim, trim the bottom, trim the edge of the ticket so that I can get them, so they appear to be more tucked in. I'm trying to decide which side I like. I like it this way, okay. So this is the one that's gonna go in first. stash my pink one and then the last one's going to be the blue well, I've got a little bit of humidity that's helping me out today mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of the bottom off so it goes under a little easier yeah, just like so. That was Nala, if you guys heard her. Okay, put a little glue here. And then we're gonna put our little last little bit right here. Okay, and I'm just gonna um, glue the edges because I wanna leave that little bubble in the middle. so that we have that dimension. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that up close so you guys can see. So again, there's two layers of chipboard behind the camera and a single layer behind the balloon. Then there's nothing, uh, th th these pieces are just inked. Same with this one right down here. So I think that looks pretty fun, don't you? Okay, that's it for the cover. The rest is gonna be on the inside. So that's it for now. I really like this camera. I think it's super cool. Um, and it's really, I think, a little too big to feature inside the album. So I think it's perfect for the cover. Otherwise, it would just overwhelm whatever page you put it on. You would not really pay attention to anything else that was on the page. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna do a little housekeeping. When I come back, we'll continue decorating the inside of this album. Okay, everyone, let's continue working on passages and the Graphic 45 folio. So I've uh, done the A side for both my waterfalls and what I decided to do is take uh, an image and waterfall it down. So I've cut slices off the edge of this so that when it's closed, you're gonna see the entire image for both of the waterfalls. And then I'll probably take a quick break and, and line up my B side papers. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and lay down this little strip that I've cut <clears throat> to go right here and it actually came off of, um, I think it actually came off this piece, but I'm not sure now. There should be a second piece, oops, that I cut, nope, I don't have it handy. I accidentally knocked something in the trash. I don't know what it was, I'll come back to that. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down and actually I'm gonna wait because I need to find the other side. I, I don't wanna glue it down if I can't find this. I'll, I'll find something else that matches. So let's go ahead and get started with the waterfall. Now uh, for the waterfall, I laid the um, papers in and sort of trimmed them individually. And the reason is if you look at the waterfall, it's not exactly perfect. So it goes back and forth a little bit. It's not completely perfect, so that means the image is gonna drift a little left and right. But I did the best I could. Now, um, that's one of the drawbacks of having a pre-made album, but one of the plus sides is uh, when I'm all done, I bet this whole project would comes together in right about an hour, the whole thing. Um, and I would probably add 
maybe 20 minutes for the cutting, which I don't do while you guys are watching. So in an hour and a half, you could have a finished project that you could gift um, to someone. Okay, now what I've decided to do here is put my image all the way to the bottom of the flap. Normally I leave um, a, a border around the whole thing, but I want this image to be continuous. So there's a border around the outside edges, but each one of the individual strips is gonna go all the way to the edge of the flap. And now I have to get them back in order. So that's the bottom, bottom, yeah, that's the next one. So this one will go right here, and as you can see, the image is gonna be continuous. So there won't be a border between the top flap and the following flap, and so on. There we go. And then the next one is here. And I laid my paper in and cut each one of these individually. I didn't just do a half inch. But you could do that too. It wouldn't, it wouldn't change the look much. But I went ahead and just uh, set the paper down and marked it with my pencil and then took it back and cut it with my trimmer. Okay, then this one. This one, it looks like I got it a little too narrow. So you're gonna see a little bit of border and it's drifting. I need to straighten this out. I'm gonna shift it to the left. That's the first time I've tried to lift on this paper. This paper is super thirsty. It's almost like chipboard, um, the cardstock here. So just FYI, I think this one comes next. Not sure, that doesn't look right. This one definitely goes here. It's got a number, but these the map piece isn't lining up. Or is it? <sighs> Here we go, goes this way. Yeah, you gotta pay attention to the details. Okay, and here's the last one. Now this one should have a border around it. So when you look at the image as a whole, you'll see a border around the whole image. And you can see there's a little bit of a gap. And again, that's partly because um, the uh, waterfall's not in perfectly straight. And I think that's just the price you have to pay if you want a pre-made album. They're never gonna be as tidy as you are. Okay, now this goes in, same thing. Uh, we're going to do the same waterfall process on this side. And then I'll take a break and line up my B-side papers. Now I'm telling you, this goes together so quickly. Go. Now I gotta line up my papers. Let's see what comes next. And make sure I got them all upside down, but I think this is next. Yes. Upside down. Perfect. 
Now I'm not sure um, what I'm going to do with uh, this part. I'm definitely going to cover this completely. I'm going to cover the back sides completely and then come back and see what's left to cover this. That is my current plan. Again, everything is upside down. See how fast that goes together? I think I actually did a better job measuring these than I did this one. I see very little gap. This is partly bulging because of the magnet back here is holding the paper up. Okay. Which come pre-installed so you don't have to have magnets. All you have to have is designer paper and a little bit of time. Okay. There we go. Perfect, so that's done. So I'll get my uh, pieces trimmed out for this. What I'm gonna do is lay it down, trace it, and then hand cut these. And then I'm gonna go get all the, um, the B sides cut and figure out what to do here. So, and then also for my spine. So I'll take a break right now. But so far, so good. I'm, I'm liking this. So this goes like this. Nope. Like this, like this, like that. So it's coming along. I'll be back shortly. Good morning, everyone. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create. And we are going to finish this folio, which is a Graphic 45 folio. And then I'm using um, Blue Fern Passages. And I've said Passions a few times, but it's Passages. And I apologize for that. Hopefully I didn't create too much confusion. As always, if you click the show more button, uh, the first thing you're gonna see is a material list and that'll be followed, well, normally would be followed by a cut list, but this is already designed and made for you. So all you have to do is trim your designer paper. So there won't be a cut list, just a material list. And um, as you can tell by the length of the video, this project goes together pretty darn fast. So probably for every minute of video, I would say it's safe to say that there was paper planning, an equal amount of time of paper planning and trimming to make the album. So it goes together pretty darn fast. At least it did with this uh, paper collection. So right now I think I'm about at the half hour mark and I think I'll finish this up 15 or 20 minutes. So I'm guessing at least for now, it's gonna be about an hour and a half from start to finish for this album, and that includes paper planning and trimming, which is pretty darn fast. All right, it looks like I didn't ink these. I apologize for that. So that is gonna slow things down a little bit, but it's just time you won't have to add on. So I used, I'm just going to tell you, it's in the cup, it's in the uh, description too, but I used two packs of the Blue Fern. And by using two packs, I'm able to cover the front and back of the waterfalls. Now, if I only used a single pack, I, oh, that's upside down. I would not have been able to cover both sides of the waterfall. I would have been able to cover um, the front, like so, where I've just got the strips, and I would have been able to cover the backs completely. So when I'm done, I'm gonna show you what it would look like if you only did one pack and what it's gonna look like if you use two packs, which is what I did. And then I'll also show you, um, What's left over? Which is not handy right now. I was gonna try to pull it in, but it's cross room. Part of 
part of the reason it takes so much so much paper to cover the waterfall is the waterfall is four and a half by six and a half and the packs I'm using are eight by eight so um, you can only get one panel um, per eight by eight because well, unless you had a really large margin um, which is not my thing so if you wanted to do quarter inch margins um, you could uh, cover the front and back with one pack but to me that's just too much um, cardstock showing around the designer paper but it's a way it's a way to make it stretch for sure and the paper the um, this craft card stock that that's the book is made out of is very thick. It's over 110. It's very heavy. So you could go with a quarter inch um, border and not worry about it being too flimsy on the edges if you wanted to. out of the wrong pile. go back and do this but I just realized that these last two I put on without inking I hate that so you can see the white core but we're gonna leave it be and I'll try to remember to do the rest Good morning, Nola. Nola's making an appearance. I think she just had breakfast. I woke her up early this morning because I wanted to get some work done before my air conditioners came on, so I got started early this morning. She was uh, not having it. She stayed in bed for a while. The um, magnets are super strong, but they're very thick too. Hold that in place for a second. Okay, so as far as just using a single pack, the, the fronts would look like this, the backs would be covered. So because I'm using two packs, I'm gonna come back and cover the rest of this flap. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, you know what, I'm missing a, I'm missing one. You know what, it looks like this one was supposed to go there, I over trimmed it, so I'm gonna have to find another piece to go. I skipped a page. Hmm. That's all right. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, five. And I've got six of these. Okay. So these are going to go in just like so. And it looks like I need to trim these down just a tiny bit more. So I'm going to go away and do that. And then we'll lay these in. Well, actually, let's go ahead and do the... Um, strap 
And I just laid this down and traced it and then cut it out by hand. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna do blue on one side and pink on the other. you're gonna to have to hold in place for a second because that magnet is so fat. center this magnet a little better so hopefully the paper will stay down. I don't know what strength that magnet is but it's the um, the piece that they put over it to cover it is like chipboard so it's going all the way through that. I'm just amazed it's super strong and the magnets that I use don't definitely don't go through chipboard. dry. Okay, now let's go ahead and lay in the B side here. First thing I'm going to do is lay this down after I ink it. <laughs> I think I'm going to go back and forth with my design. Um, so I'll do clouds, then I'll do the second pattern, then clouds, then the second pattern, just go back and forth. Thank you. 
the clouds again. <clears throat> so in the pack you get 20 sheets, 10 patterns, two of each. And like I said, I went ahead and opened up a second pack so that I could cover both sides of my waterfall. Which I think just gives it a more finished look, but depends on what size photo you're gonna put on here. I mean, if your photo fills the whole page, then not a big deal. But if you think you're going to have some border around it, I think it looks better um, to finish the page. And like I said, the flap size itself is four and a half by six and a half. So it's designed to have a border around a four by six standard for photo. Okay. one. Just want to make sure you get glue all the way around that magnet and ink on our panel. So from a design perspective, what I did um, was I covered all my major surfaces first. So the um, outside of the album, this large pocket page, and the inside liner here. And then I came back with the paper that was left and um, decided what I was gonna do with the waterfalls. Um, if you start with the waterfalls, you're gonna really limit what you can do with your covers. So you might wanna do your covers first. You might wanna think that through. So there we go. So again, that's what it would look like um, if we just used one eight by eight. I forgot to, I need to glue this down. And this is a strip that was trimmed off just another piece. So I think it's actually part of, it is, it's part of this. I had to trim a little bit off because this is about seven by seven. So I wound up taking a little bit off the eight inches and I used it right here. And you can actually see the, the pattern continues. Okay, so that's in. So um, let's go ahead and finish the waterfalls. And then I went ahead and um, because I opened the second pack, I had additional paper that I could use to cover um, some of the graphic 45 tags. Okay, these need to be trimmed. just a little bit and I need to find another piece to go right here. So it looks like I had this and it was over trimmed. So Bo, let's see, that's, what is that? That's probably, that's not a quarter inch. Maybe it is. If it is, I'll just show, show you what a quarter or six, and a half six okay so this is over a quarter inch border so that's what it would look like as opposed to this if you um, wanted to cut your um, pieces in half at four inches um, that's roughly what it would look like so it's a lot of border it's not my thing but you could definitely do it and then you could get away easily with one pack because you could cover each one of these waterfalls with a single sheet, front and back. Okay, I am gonna go trim these and locate um, another coordinating piece of paper to go right here. Be back in a minute. Okay, I found um, another piece. I guess I just, I had enough of the paper. I just um, 
didn't get it cut, I guess, last night when I was uh, trying to get everything queued up for video today. Okay, this can go here. Okay, now I am gonna take a break and go trim these off just a little bit, and I'll show you what I mean. So they're too close to um, the hinge area, so these will all need to be trimmed just a little bit. And because this is a half inch and this is four and a half overall, I was able to cut these panels in half at four, and I still need to trim a little bit off. So for the front, you can get um, two panels covered per sheet. For, for the back, it's only one, one sheet. Per okay, I've trimmed everything out. We're ready to go, ready to go. So now these fit on here just perfect. There we go. So that is front and back of that waterfall. Now we'll do this side. Yeah, I think I've got everything inked and ready. These will go in in no time. That's right.
And then we've got just a couple extra sheets left because I cut six instead of five because I forgot this side was already covered. That's that. So let's take a look at this now. So the pocket page closes first, then this closes, then this closes. So we are getting there. So the next thing is the pocket. So I've got these tags lined up. Those were very pretty. I'm using the Graphic 45 tags and the Graphic 45 tag die. I was not a fan of their tags until they came out with the tag die because I didn't like having that top of the tag. Oops, yeah, that's right. Having to hand cut the top of the tag, it was just so difficult. Um, this makes them go really fast and they look super neat. I think they look very cool. So I've got a couple of tags. The last, last thing is an insert. So I have to tell you, I learned something. Um, I, originally, I was gonna just leave this as a rectangle and not cut the notch out. Um, normally, I would slip, slip it inside the pocket, trace it, and then cut it out. Well, they've glued the pocket closed on this side, so it's a half inch narrower on this side than it is on this side. So you can't, whatever you're putting on the outside won't fit on the inside. So I decided to notch it after I put my paper on and I would not recommend doing that. I had a hard time getting a good cut for a couple of reasons. One, it was very thick, but the other reason is my punch, um, I couldn't hold it straight because this page is actually attached, right? So I was trying to hold my punch and punch and it kept slip, slipping around on me. So if you are gonna punch a hole, I recommend that, or punch a, a curve, do it before you install your paper. And um, I guess one of the things that you could do is you could create a template um, just with a strip of paper, run it in here and just know if you're all the way at the edge, when you line it up with your designer paper that you wanna go all the way, you know, match the edge on this side, not this side, because like I said, it comes in and it's glued down to the hinge um, at least a quarter inch, but it may be as much as a half inch. So you can't get it in straight. So. Lesson learned, um, It's I'm still okay with it. I'm probably gonna come back with a curved scissor and clean that up a little bit and then ink the edges so it's less obvious. Um, but again, uh, I would punch it before you install it or just leave it a rectangle. So the last thing I need to do is put an insert in this pocket. I'll be right back. And I'll show you what I mean, that it's not the right, it's not the same width um, as soon as I cut this paper. I think it needs to be, right about here. So you can, so that's probably not gonna be narrow enough. I'm gonna try it though. Yeah, it needs to be even narrower. Okay, 
Okay, and for this insert, I'm not going to cardstock back it. I don't have cardstock that matches perfectly. If I did, I would. Um, I'm just gonna ink the edges and put it in as, uh, as is, and by the way, it is very rigid, so you could easily do that and not have to worry about it being too flimsy. Move the edges. And what did I do? I did six and a half, six and a half by seven, six and a half by seven. And that's gonna fit, So and it's snug. <laughs> <laughs> so it is it does come in uh, probably over a little bit a little more than a half an inch in fact it's too snug I'm gonna take even more off I'm gonna make it uh, six by seven six by seven and that way it'll just slide in smoothly you don't have to work so hard on it There we go, much better. Okay, and it's just gonna stick out. You can trim that off if you want. I think they did the same thing down here. It's glued closed instead of having a, 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 a gusset or a hinge. So that's it. So let's go ahead and look at the whole book from start to finish. So here is the cover. Okay, and I've used elements from the die cuts. And I have lots of die cuts left to decorate the inside, which I may do, I'm not sure. I'm running out of time. I'm trying to get two projects out this week. Um, but you have lots that you can add to the pages. Okay, these are the two Graphic 45 tags. So the one thing I did note is, and I think this is a design flaw, frankly, is the magnet is actually underneath this so the magnet has to pass through from the back of the book through this pocket through whatever's in the pocket i don't think it's actually it would have been better if the magnet was actually on top and then when you whatever you put in the pocket wouldn't be interfering with um, adhesion to the other side and i can't really tell i'd have to deconstruct it to feel it so if you put something in the pocket just try not to push it all the way over the magnet so there's uh, one side and then we've got our pocket here and then our waterfall on both sides. And then, oops, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> can't get it together there. It, it is a nice book though, I gotta tell you, it feels really nice. Oh, I forgot to put my strip on the outside. So we still have two more things to do. They're already cut, I just uh, didn't install them. So this is just a, a piece left over from uh, one of the other pages. It's gonna go on the hinge here. And that's gonna go on the other side. And that is it for the Passages slash Graphic 45 Folio album. I like it. I would definitely do it again. It's different for me because I, whenever I decorate a waterfall, I usually install the designer paper and then add, um, is that the right size? Yes, it is. And then add my waterfalls on top of it. So there's the background, there's designer paper. So this is already done for you. So it's a little bit different. So you, you wind up with a more cardstock showing. And I'm fine with that, it's just different. And what I mean by that is like around here. So if I had built this, there would have been a mat underneath it. And same for this side. I'm okay with it. I keep forgetting that has to go first. <laughs> there we go. It's lovely. Nice, nice. Okay, thanks everybody for tuning in. That's it for this um, folio. I'll be back soon with another project. Bye-bye.